What's up everybody, Vlock is here and today I have a big announcement. This is the beginning of a new series where I'm going to explain Create Mods redstone blocks with examples. And what this means is I'm going to be showing you pretty much everything that I've built in the past in context. So we're going to look, for example, in the first episode, we're going to look at the power toggle latch. And we're going to go look at some things that I've built in the past that use it so that you know how to use it yourself and so that you can learn how to build these things down the road. So I believe that if you watch this series all the way to the end, you will be able to learn to build some really cool sorting systems, smart storage systems, even configurable farms and all of the other things that you might think are crazy that I put out in my videos. But I believe that you'll be able to build a lot of these things and design your own things once you understand the concepts behind these really cool create mod blocks. So just to flex a little bit, I built this uh, addition, subtraction and multiplication calculator about a week ago and I haven't gotten a chance to release it yet. What this thing is, is a mechanical calculator. So it's doing addition, subtraction and multiplication for nine digits without using any proper logic circuits. What we're doing here is an entirely mechanical setup where items get dropped on a conveyor belt, they go into a specific chest, and then we decide if we're subtracting, they go one way, if we're multiplying, they go another, and if we're adding, another thing happens. And the reason I'm showing you this isn't just to flex, although that's a, a part of it, but it is to tell you that create mod redstone pieces are extremely worth learning, even if you're not actually big on redstone, even if you haven't used so much as a repeater in the past. Well, I'm pretty sure you've used a repeater. Let's hope that you've used a repeater, but but either way, whether you have or you haven't, I believe that Create Mods Redstone can actually open up the world of redstone to you. It makes it a lot easier. And as a simple example, I want to show you this uh, crazy nine digit addition calculator, which I didn't design myself. I copied this block by block from a tutorial on YouTube and I was really, really happy when it worked in the end. Anything here starting from the yellow section to blue, gray and the dark blue over there is that purple, whatever it is. And all of these cables here by the screen, all of these plus a lot more are condensed right here with these redstone links and then these two layers right here with display one and display two. So the funny part here is that with Create Mods Redstone Links, you essentially have cables. So you don't have Minecraft's blockiness where you have to wire things very carefully. For example, all of these red blocks here are to prevent the overlap between this wire and that wire. And this is something I stopped worrying about completely when I started working with Redstone Links because, I mean, they don't need it. You just color code and you move on. And so honestly, I think the best analogy here is that we have cables, kind of like when you open any computer or uh, or old electronic device like a radio, you'll find a lot of tiny cables going all over the place and it's not something that you can easily do in Minecraft without having a massive structure. So that's a really big one. Uh, not to mention all of the other really cool advanced things like content observers and stockpile switches and the smart shoots. I really feel that you can benefit a lot from this series and that you will be able to build something, dare I say, like this by the end of the series if you stick around and if you ask questions about anything that's not clear. And obviously I welcome any suggestions about the way that I'm showing this information or the amount of information that I'm providing. And now it's time to officially kick off the series and start talking about our first block here, which is the power toggle latch. And in uh, real life terms, this is called a T flip flop or a toggle flip flop. And I personally like the uh, real scientific name better than power toggle latch, but that's what it is. You give it a redstone signal or a redstone pulse and it's going to turn on and stay on. And if you give it another pulse, is going to turn off and stay off. And to make this more clear, I'm going to use a lever real quick. So if a lever comes on, it's going to come on naturally. If you turn off the lever, nothing's going to happen because this thing expects redstone to change its state. So you give it redstone again and it turns off and then you take away the redstone and nothing happens. So you can see that this little section here is showing you what the state of the external redstone is. But this light here and the light around the lever shows you the state of the output of this block. So when you turn it off, these remain on, then turn it on again, and then they turn off. Now, before I jump in and show you a couple of examples of ways that you can use this to make contraptions, let me show you how to craft it real quick. And it's 
honestly one of the cheapest and easiest things to craft. You just need three types or three blocks of stone, any kind, doesn't matter, it can be granite, stone, diorite, uh, you know, I mean, all of it. I don't need to keep naming them. As you can see right here, it says accepts any forge stone, which means any stone. And then it takes a lever and a redstone torch. It takes one piece of cobblestone and one stick, which is extremely cheap. And then the redstone torch also takes one piece of redstone dust and one stick. So if you actually collect that redstone dust that you find in caves as you walk, you can make a bunch of stacks of these on your first day playing Minecraft. So you have no excuse and uh, it is going to come in really handy. So I recommend you start getting those redstone torches because as we get through these, we're actually going to start building some cool stuff and you're going to need those and uh, it would be nice if you have them ready. Now since I mentioned that the power toggle latch is a T flip flop, I decided to build a simple T flip flop in vanilla redstone so that you can see the amount of space that we're saving and the amount of noise and you know how much better this is and this kind of can serve as a guideline for you to know like how cool create mods blocks are they're going to save you a ton of space because this T flip flop and not just this particular design there are hundreds of ways you can build them none of them is going to be a single block obviously um, what this does is the same thing it converts the press of a button into a permanent toggle what this one does is it spits out this redstone block and it keeps it out so that you can use it to power something and then when you press the button again it gets retracted and it turns it off and I have a lever here to show you that it works exactly the same way it needs redstone to change its state, not to be powered. So when you give it redstone, it's going to change the state and when you take away the redstone, the state doesn't change and the door remains open. And then when you give it redstone again, the state changes again and the door closes. So this is very cool to separate the redstone state from the actual state. The flip flops are extremely important in any door that you're going to build because I mean, you don't really want to open the door with a lever. If you're using a lever and then you go inside and then you want to close it, there's no way for you to close the door from the inside unless that lever turns off. So having a T flip flop is a very crucial thing to do if you want to have a door that you can actually use. So right here, as you see, this is our T flip flop and it's tiny, it just adds one block to whatever you're building. And uh, I'm sure you noticed that I'm low-key using redstone links here, even though we haven't gotten to that in our tutorial. But these are basically my favorite component about Create Mod, and I think I've said that two million times in my previous videos. Right here, this thing would have been a lot bulkier. I would have had to connect whatever source of energy, like here, for example, and it would have to go to all of these points so that we can turn off the torches. But other than that, I think that this toggle switch is extremely useful and when i saw it the first time um i was really pleasantly surprised now there is also the powered latch which is uh, something we'll cover in the next episode which preserves the state and will not turn off until you supply it with uh, energy on the side but i kept that one for a separate episode because it's actually despite how simple it looks it's extremely powerful i've used it before to build memory modules i use it extensively in that calculator over there so we're gonna look at it in depth next time and i think when you learn that one you're actually going to just immediately jump multiple levels in redstone so if that's something that interests you again you might want to consider subscribing now I have some more examples for usage of this tool, um, the power toggle latch, because, you know, it's it's very interesting because the current goes uh, forward, so there are a number of things that you can do. The simplest right here is a series of two power toggle latches. When you press the button for the first time, whatever is at the end is going to power on, right? Then when you press it again, what happens is it will remain on. And then you press it again, and then that thing turns off and then you press it again before the entire circuit powers off again and then you can go back and press it. The easiest thing that I think is going to be very practical for most people to use is the clock because as you saw it increases the number of, fl of clicks to repeat the entire cycle so this thing remains on for a little bit and then it remains off for a little bit even though you're pressing the button and the longer you make this the longer the gaps are going to be so this thing remains on and then now it's off and it stays off a while. There's something that you may or may not know is if you place two observers facing each other, you create an observer clock that, uh, well, it's right there, that sends a really quick pulse. So you can slow it down 
with this or you can slow down any type of um, pulse coming from anywhere so now obviously this is create mod and uh, the topic of one future episode is definitely gonna be uh, the adjustable repeaters namely the adjustable pulse repeater which can be combined with one of these <laughs> is going to make up for all of this so we don't have to have a huge chain but like i said this is a future episode so let's say i make it eight seconds it's going to take eight seconds since the time we get a pulse for this thing to switch state i really think this uh is the proper way of doing it but uh it's also worth mentioning that this thing works you may be able to use it for cool effects and sometimes you do want a clock that spans a distance because maybe you want to take multiple um, out uh, sources of power to power different things. So either way, I think this is a pretty good thing to know. Now, I know that I did mention that you can hide this behind a wall, but it's uh, it can't be understated. This is very important if you're building doors because you never want the mechanism to be showing. So let's say that we have this here, we have this here, and then we have this right here. So you can have the button here now. Um, hold on. So one of these is on. You gotta turn this off to make sure that the door is closed. And now if we press this button, the door opens, press it again, the door closed. How cool is that? Now before I let you go, I really wanna give you these really important announcements that I really think you'll like. The first announcement is that I am finally releasing my Discord server. And the Discord server I have in mind is going to be all about answering your questions and helping you build cool things with CreateMod. So if you're working on a contraption and you're having difficulty with it, you have general questions about any of these blocks or anything else in CreateMod, or if you're trying to build one of the things I built in the past and you're having a hard time doing that, well, I'm here to help. Send me screenshots, videos, you know, we're going to discuss them and we're going to get you through that build. Now for my second announcement, and it has nothing to do with me pressing this button, um, I want to say that this is the first episode of a series, and I've mentioned that a couple times already, but I want to say that I'm extremely open to advice. Like, I really, really want to hear what you think, your tips, your things that you'd like me, you know, things that you'd like me to explain in future episodes, uh, think things you'd like me to cover more. Maybe you think I missed some things or, you know, I could do a little bit of a better job explaining some things. That advice is going to be really important to me because I really, really want to achieve my goal of teaching as many of you how to build really cool things with Redstone. And so I think that that goal will be much more feasible if you help me with it and if you tell me what you'd like to hear. But other than that, I think this was a good start to the series. This is a nice block to actually work with, even though it's extremely simple. So I really hope that you at least learned something or maybe enjoyed the video. And it's also a nice teaser for all of the future videos where things are going to get more complex and more fun. So with that, I'd like to leave you today. And um, again, I'll remind you that if you're not subscribed and if you're interested in this, please consider subscribing. But other than that, I want to thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time.